side door in a unit and we'll give you an overview of all the components uh, within the within the heater. The HK150 and HK300 differ from the HK500 in that they have single coil, single burner assembly, uh, which makes sense for the 150,000 BTU and 300,000 BTU. The 150 and 300 are almost almost exactly the same except for the uh, capacity. So if we look inside, you see a circulation uh, motor and pump. This circulation pump and motor draw from the glycol tank, draws the mixture from the glycol tank, and it sends it uh, via a hose through the coil. Once it's heated within the coil, it's dumped back into the tank. So all you're doing is on that, on that circuit, you are drawing coolant, heating it, and dumping it back into the tank as heated coolant. If you look a little further in, you see the field pump. The job of the field pump is to uh, draw the heated glycol from the tank and pump it out to a manifold at the rear of the unit, which you'll see in a while. The manifold disperses, uh, distributes the, the glycol through a series of hoses and then back to the return manifold and back into the, uh, into the glycol tank. You're looking at the diesel fired burner. The diesel fired burner draws diesel uh, for combustion from the tank, which is in the bottom half of the unit. Uh, as well as a generator which goes on the front hitch and draws from the same diesel tank at the bottom of the generator. So if you look here, here's the fuel filter uh, for the burner fuel. I'll just point out a couple of the safety devices while we're in here. If you look over here, we have in, inside this housing is a pressure switch. What it does, it senses uh, fluid pressure and movement and it will shut off the burner if there's no fluid present. It's just a safety so you don't burn down the burner. Uh, on the side, on this side here, you will see a little glycol switch. And what that does is uh, monitor the level of the glycol within the tank. If the glycol gets too low, it will shut down the whole, the whole unit. Another safety, which you can see on the far back of the unit is an aquastat in the gray, in the gray box. The aquastat's responsibility is if the temperature coming off of the coil gets too hot, it will again shut down the system. So as you can see, there's their safety is built in to protect the system. A couple other things to point out while we're in here is if you look on the side of the frame supporting the coil, you will see a compressor. The compressor is used at the end of the job when you're blowing the glycol out of the hoses and back into the glycol tank. So that's about all there is in here. So what we're going to do next, well, there's one more item I'll show you is the, the sight glass on the glycol tank. All it is is a visual indication of your level of glycol. So if you can see in here, the glycol level is, is sitting almost at the max level, which is what you want to see. When you fill up your hoses, obviously that's going to come down, and then you pull it back and it's going to go back up. That's all we're going to look at in here. We're going to go to the back and we will talk about the operation of this piece of equipment. We're going to show you the operation of the HK150-500. Uh, what you're going to do is open the barn door at the rear of the unit. Again, the doors do latch with catches on the side, but we're not going to show you that uh, right now because of uh, accessibility here. So, if we focus in on the, the back end, uh, you're going to, we're going to assume that, that you have a generator on the front hitch which is powering this unit. Uh, in this case, we have shore power, so you can use either or. Uh, again, we're just using shore power just so that you can hear this video that we're making. So, if you look on the panel itself, you're going to see one circuit it's got the circuit power. We're going to turn that to the on position. Once the circuit power is on, you'll notice that you have a, you have a temperature reading. This is the temperature, uh, this is the return temperature of glycol, and this is the supply temperature of glycol. On the supply, you can set it up to 180 degrees max. You can set it anywhere as lower than that if you want. In this case here, uh, it's been set to 180 degrees so that the burners will fire, and what they'll try and do is maintain 180 degrees within the tank. So, by setting it at 180, the burners will fire, go to 180. Once it drops by 5 degrees, uh, the burners will fire up again to keep it going to 180. And again, here you can see the return temperature. This is the temperature that's picked up on the return side of the glycol. So you can see that you have a circuit power on and nothing else. Here's an emergency switch here, and in the case of emergency, you would hit the red switch and it would kill everything. 
So the first thing you want to do is you pull up to the field with your unit. You're going to turn the power on and what you're going to do is lay your hose off the field. The difference in a 150 and a 300 is that the 150 has two hoses on the reel where a 300 has four hoses on the reel. And you can see the manifold has two outputs and two returns as opposed to a 300 which is up uh, four of each. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay the, uh, I'm going to lay some of the hose out on the field. You're going to want to put out, your, put out your foot pedal. You can do it, you can do it two methods. You can use the foot pedal to operate your reel and get it out, or you can use a method of freewheeling, and I'll show you that first. There's a, there's a lock on the reel for transportation. What you would do is unlock this, and now your hose can, your reel can free reel. So what you would do is you would also loosen up your hose, your, uh, sorry, your belt tension by turning this, this knob counterclockwise. Once it's turned counterclockwise, it removes the tension on your belt, and you're able to free wheel the hose out to your field. So that's a quicker way of doing it. Uh, I will show you now the mechanical method of doing it. So I'll tighten up my belt tension again. And then on the control panel, if you look at the control panel, you will see uh, if this switch is in the off field loop or hose loop position, hose reel position, you would turn it to the hose reel position. You would make sure that your hose reel direction switch is on the out instead of the in. Out. Once you have that, you can power up your reel via the foot pedal. So you would reel out your, your hose. Once your hose is all laid in the field, we're going to assume that I've laid out the field and hose. You would plug one end of your hose into your supply manifold the quick coupler, you would open up the valve, and we're going to assume the other end has gone out to the field and come back, and you would hook your return connector in here, so what it does is makes one big loop, it goes out the, goes out the supply, it's laid on the ground, comes back into the return manifold, back into the tank for heating. So once you have your hose all laid out, in this case it would be two hoses and a, and a 400, you would have four hoses laid out on the ground. Away. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn your burner on to heat up the fluid. Uh, if you are freewheeling, you can't do it at the same time, but uh, if you were to use the, the mechanical layout, you could uh, heat up your burner. We're going, to, we're going to start the burner now and heat up the fluid within the tank. So what you want to do is, uh, there's a switch here that's got compressor off and heater loop. What you're going to want to do is turn it on the heater loop. You'll see the first thing that happens, you're going to get a beacon come on, but you're also going to see a circulation pump, which, no, which means that you have circulation pressure. The next thing that's going to happen over time is that the burner is going to turn on and fire up. I'm not sure if you can hear it or not, but the burner is now fired up, and you now have a burner flame light, which means we have ignition. And what's going to happen is your supply temperature is going to start climbing as the fluid heats up within the tank. In the case of this video, we are going to turn this in the off position. Typically what you do is let it heat up until it gets 180 degrees. Once to 180 degrees, what you would do is you would turn on the field loop. So once you turn the field loop on, what it does is circulates fluid out of the manifold into the field and back to the return manifold and again back into the tank. So we're just going to turn on the, uh, we're going to turn on the field loop just to show you what it does. You can see once you turn the field loop on, this will take several seconds before it gets going. It's got a timer in place. As you can see, the field pump turned on. The light's coming on, telling you have field pump activity, and you're now pushing fluid through this hose and back into the return if it was hooked up. In this case, we're not hooked up, so we're just going to turn this off. A couple more things on the panel that you would notice is that you have a low glycol shutdown and over voltage, over temperature light. So if this low glycol light ever came on, it would shut your system down and you would assume that you're low on glycol because you've got a hose cut or whatever and that the uh, low glycol shutdown switch in the front has uh, kicked into play and shut down the unit. If you ever had an over temperature light, it would tell you that there's a condition where your fluid coming out of your coil is too hot. Again, it would shut down the unit. If you look at a couple other things on this panel, you have a circuit breaker and you have a GFI as well. So we're back in the uh, front side door of the HK150 uh, unit. We're just going to show it a couple 
point on a couple other maintenance items. If you look on the uh, on the door, on the side door of the trailer, it points out that you want to change the nozzles, uh, the electrodes, the fuel filters every 750 hours. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to point out that uh, the fuel filter is very easily accessible. It sits on here. Again, typically 750. If you're if you're in a dirty environment or you suspect you have bad fuel, obviously you're going to want to change it more often than that. The second item that's going to need uh, a fair bit of maintenance for every 750 hours is the burner itself. Once you open this hinge door, you will find uh, that it needs nozzle replacement and electrode replacement as required, uh, typically every 750 uh, or sooner. Uh, the last item that needs maintenance is, you can't see it, but on top of the glycol tank on the return side, there's a uh, strainer basket for the glycol. And what you're going to want to do is take the fittings off and you're going to want to wash out the strainer, put it back in, and you should be good for, uh, again, another 750 hours. While I'm here, I also want to point out that there's uh, more grease nipple, grease zerks on the side door hinges, which need to be greased as well. Um, the maintenance on this is typical of the HK500. It's a very same uh, maintenance, maintenance regime. Uh, 750 hours is typical of, of all our heaters.